What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. Okay, after it was teased last week by Elon on Twitter, we just got FSD Beta 10.13 in the release of 2022.16.3.5. So, we've been waiting for this. It's been a little while since we got a new FSD update. It is slowly going to be dropping to the fleet as usual, but we have some exciting updates for this and a lot of features that have been discussed and bug fixes and tweaks in this release. It does bring a lot of the features from prior regular releases into this version for FSD beta users. Let's go ahead and jump right into it, take a look at these release notes, and obviously as always when we get it on our Model 3, we'll do a first test drive. Thumbs up this video, subscribe to the channel, let's go. Alright, so as you can see here, like we said, 2022.16.3.5 is going to be FSD beta 10.13. Starting out on these release notes, it is quite lengthy. Let's go ahead and actually just read through these. And this is going to start with the improved decision making for unprotected left turns using better estimation of egos interaction with other objects. Improved stopping pose while yielding for crossing objects at Chuck Cook style unprotected left turns. This is actually just a user if you guys were curious about it. That's where the Chuck Cook came from. It's a recommendation he had. Then we have made speed profile more comfortable when creeping for visibility to allow for smoother stops when protecting for potentially occluded objects. Enabled creeping for visibility at any intersection where objects might cross Ego's path regardless of presence. Improved lane position error by 5% and lane recall by 12%. Improved lane position error of crossing emerging lanes by 22% by adding long range skip connections. Improved pedestrian and bicyclist velocity error by 17%, especially when Ego is making a turn. Improved animal detection recall by 34% and decreased false positives by 8%. Improved detection recall of a far away crossing vehicle by 4%. Improved the is parked attribute for vehicles by 5% by adding 20% more examples to the training set. That's massive. After that, we have upgrades to occupancy networks to detect dynamic objects and improved performance by adding a video module, turning the loss function and adding, excuse me, tuning the loss function and adding 37K new clips, reduced fall slowdowns around crosswalks for better classification of pedestrians and bicyclists, reduced false lane changes of cones or backlogs by preferring gentle offsetting in lane when appropriate, improved in lane positioning. Those are all of the beta release nodes, and then these are the features that are bringing brought over from stable release. We obviously have that autopilot maximum speed increase from 80 to 85 miles an hour, and this is available worldwide. The automatic supercharger rerouting, again, the availability on this is to be determined, but it is for the entire fleet of all S3, X, and Y vehicles. This is just to allow Tesla to reroute you if things it'll save you some time at a congested supercharger. Navigate on autopilot fork initiation. This is a little update and it's not available in the US, but it's saying navigate on autopilot has been updated to require a driver initiated request before the vehicle will select a motorway exit or interchange. This driver initiated request can be made by using the turnstock shortly before the lateral maneuver is required. So yeah, this is mainly going to be across the European regulation just because of some of their rules out there. Nothing I'm expected to see here in the United States. For those in Europe, though, this is for you guys. Then we have those driver profile updates for media players if you're logged in your Spotify account and all that. Obviously, this is available for the U.S. The regenerative braking. TBD on this one, but this is just letting you know now a little bit more about uh, regen braking and how it's going to work. Your vehicle can now automatically apply regular brakes for consistent deceleration. Awesome feature, but... As you can read here, it seems like it is still in testing and not available yet for production vehicles. We'll see what happens. It also states on here, it's only on the 3 and the Y, not on the X and the S. Then you have those navigation energy predictions, of course. And this has been pretty pretty beneficial. I think it's been a good update. Tesla mic, obviously nothing for the US uh, or anything significant unless you own that product. And obviously then after that, you have those updated visualizations. Undocumented change, but pretty obvious when you actually look at your vehicle. All of the, uh, basically the look of the vehicles have improved. And yeah, much cleaner looking, I believe, as well. You have your regen and acceleration line. Again, another undocumented change worldwide. And it's just letting you know 
for your three and Y vehicles that the, the line directly above the speedometer that obviously has always been your regen braking and acceleration uh, is a little more thick now and it'll grow to the left a little more when regen braking is taking place uh, and then obviously when you're going to the right you're using your acceleration and using more energy quickly with this update it says the regeneration line will now also show when physical brakes are applied physical brake line only shows when you are in autopilot keep that in mind if you're driving the vehicle itself you will not see these changes after that this is kind of beneficial because of a lot of issues with uh, the low voltage battery for the 12 volt I'm glad they're adding this so if you go to controls software additional vehicle information it'll now show if your vehicle has a heat pump or the type of low voltage battery installed since they've changed that recently and really lastly here's the power trunk another undocumented change if your vehicle is equipped with a powered power trunk the update addresses an issue that could have caused your trunk from closing completely i actually have that issue personally so i'm excited to see that update here as well so right now that's all we have for 10.13 fsd beta let me know what you guys think are you excited about the progress it's making do you think it's actually progressing at a good enough speed to where this is actually going to be a full-fledged software feature instead of just a beta that'll release to everybody. I'm really curious because obviously FSD betas have been ongoing now for years and they're still progressing in the right directions. Obviously we're gonna have speed bumps along the way with some of these releases that come out, but it has been a really common conception that all of these releases are progressing pretty well towards the ultimate goal, obviously, of full self-driving. Let us know in the comments down below. What do you guys think? Are you excited about it? My biggest concern right now personally is the cost of FSD beta. So to have full self-driving, it's 12,000 bucks. Obviously that includes the beta as you go, but that's pretty significant. So what's it gonna be eventually when it launches 20,000? Who knows? Thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.